So if you're a Framer user, you probably like taking your sites to the next level. And in this video, I'm showing you a secret tool that allows you to do just that. It's called Hana, and yeah, you're gonna learn about it in this video. My name is Nandi, this is Framer University, and let's get started. So basically, as you can see it on my screen, this is a Framer website and we're going to learn how to create this little interaction that we can see on the right panel because HANA allows you to do just that. Uh, but it's just an example. So if you go to their website, HANA is basically a tool created by the creators of Spline. And if you don't know Spline, Spline is a 3D tool. It allows you to create like 3D scenes and stuff like that. I have a few videos about it on my channel, so you can watch them. Maybe I'm going to leave them in the description. But Hena basically allows you to create things not in 3D, but in 2D. And it allows you to create cool little interactions. So for example, I just searched the community. So if you search in the community for Hena, you're going to find this little 12 ready to use um, 2D interactions. Then you're going to see that there are some really cool examples here. And one of them is especially nice. Look at this, for example, how it like reacts to the cursor, really nice. And by the way, you can just simply embed these on your website. So it's super simple to use. Uh, look at these arrows, for example, as some like hovering and they're following my cursor. Or for example, this one is really cool. As you can see, they have progressive blur, which is also really nice. But what I liked the most is this one. So in this video, we're gonna be recreating this just so you can get the hang of Hannah. It's gonna be also my first you know, uh, time trying it out. Uh, but yeah, I think it's gonna be fun. So with any further ado, let's get started. You're gonna find all the like project files and like everything that I'm using in this video so you can remix them and do whatever you wanna do with them. Uh, but yeah, if you want to learn, Hannah, uh, stick around and um, let's explore it together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just somehow leave, yeah, uh, leave this little preview. And then on the top right, uh, if we go to home, probably I can create a new Hannah file and we're going to start creating. So the first thing that we see right off the bat is that the UI is really familiar. So if you're a designer uh, used to, you know, design tools, you're going to be pretty familiar with these panels, left layers panel, uh, some tools like frames, rectangles, text layers, and stuff like that, paths, vectors on the top and on the right, you know, some of the properties uh, on the selected layers. So I think we can start by clicking here and drawing a frame. So we're going to have something like 500 by 500. Looks pretty good. And I can name this, I don't know, text animation. And so since I need a text layer, I'm going to click here, T, and then I'm just going to click and draw a text layer here or text frame on the canvas. And then I can just write in Hannah, copy and paste it a bunch of times. I can also make this a little bit larger. The color doesn't really matter at this stage, uh, but I want to use maybe spline sans. And then we can also use semi bold maybe. And then I'm going to make it much bigger. Yep, something like that. And then we'll just have more text right here. Great. Then we can recenter this to make sure it's centered. Yeah, looks great. Maybe I want to push it a little bit to the right. But yeah, overall, this looks really nice. And so uh, the trick here, if we take a quick peek at the final effect, we can see that we are highlighting specific parts of the text layer. So we're turning it to this blue color. But the way this is created is a little bit, you, you probably not, if you even think of it this way, but basically we are creating a frame that has little windows that we see through and on the other side below this little frame we have the color um, and so basically just for you to understand i brought this little paper so basically what we're going to do is we're going to take the text and we're going to basically draw another this will be our frame we're going to draw a frame and we're going to put the text above this frame and we're going to cut little windows on this frame with the text shape and basically we're gonna have like these windows like this. Well, let me just 
I'm gonna just create, create a little window here. We're gonna have little windows, but of course it's not gonna be just a little hole. It's gonna be with the shape of the text and we're gonna see through it. So right now you're seeing me through this window, but we're gonna actually see the color and that's how we're gonna achieve this effect. So all we have to do in order to achieve that is we have to you know, draw a little frame. So I'm gonna click here, draw a frame above, but we're gonna move it below uh, in a second. So let's move this frame below the text. So now the text is over, the rectangle is below. And now if we select both of them, there, there are Boolean modifiers on the top right. And one of these actually creates that little window effect because we can click subtract. And basically that means that we are subtracting the text from the like rectangle, essentially creating those windows. So if I click that, as you can see, it works perfectly. Now, if I'm changing the, so you, I can just hide this Boolean that I created. You can see I have a base color on this frame, which is, you know, gray. And if I put this, like windows now on top, you can see that we are seeing the base color, the gray, on the on these through these little windows, which is actually you know the text shape. So if I change the base color of the frame, I'm seeing different color on the text. And this would be super cool for us because we can change the base color to white. So by default we're not seeing anything, but we can draw another frame or a little rectangle. And, you know, if it's above the windows, then it's going to just be a simple uh, rectangle. However, if I move it below, you can see that essentially is highlighting them. I'm going to rename this to windows. So we will know that, okay, this is the windows layer. And again, if I just move this rectangle here, you can see that I'm highlighting the text uh, with that. So what I can do is I can go to the right panel and change the color. So I can just paste in this color that I need, and I can fully round its corners. So now I have this, looks really good. We'll be able to move this with an interaction and it will look really nice. By the way, one little thing I just remembered, we probably should decrease the letter spacing so these lines are a little bit closer uh, on the text. So I can just go to the line height uh, of the text property and I can just decrease it. So now it's probably much better. And um, and yeah, it's gonna work really nicely. So I'm just gonna center this right here and make it a little bit smaller like this. Something like this could work. And then I'm gonna call this rectangle just solid because it's gonna be a solid fill. And then we're gonna duplicate this, so right click and duplicate. And I'm gonna call this gradient because you can see that we not only have a solid fill, but we also have a a little like gradient around so you can see that around this area we can still see a little bit of text but it's not that you know strong of, of a color so that's how we're going to create that oh, and by the way i just noticed that we have all uppercase here now but whatever it's fine so gradient uh, we're just going to switch it to gradient here on the right color uh, gradient and then we're gonna just paste in the color again to both sides this will be 10 percent and then basically the other side of the gradient will be the same color, but with 0%. And then the type will be radial gradient. And I think that's basically it. I can make this a little bit larger. And now you can see we are creating the exact same effect that we can see on the original. Then the last frame that we need is for the little outline. So we can just duplicate the solid again move it above the windows and then call it outline and i can remove the fill color and just add a stroke with this same blue color make it a little bit larger and that's basically it we created this little thing however i'm already noticing that you can see we we kind of <laughs> we don't really have enough text uh here it kind of ends here so i'm just going to select the text on the left panel click inside and then just start writing a little bit more henna here. Just duplicate it a bunch of times. Now you can see that we kind of have enough uh, right now. So looks much better. And essentially at this stage, all we have to do is to animate these layers because you know if I select the gradient, the solid and the outline and I start moving them with my arrow keys, 
this is exactly what I what I want to do, but you know, I want to create it as an interaction that follows my cursor. So I can keep them selected and on the right panel, uh, we have these events. I can click to add a new one and here I can select follow. So it basically will follow my cursor. I can set the damping to 20. Uh, the hover out uh, speed will be a little bit slower. Basically the hover out speed is, it means that when we leave this frame, it will basically move back to its starting position, which is like the center. So that's basically it. And now I can just click here, a little play button in the top to preview it. And it looks really nice. So at this point, you know, you created a really cool interaction that you can use on your website to take it to the next level, but how can I use it on my website? Well, you can select the frame that you want to export and on the right panel, you have a bunch of export options. You can either you know, take an image or a video, you can upload them to the website, or if you want this interaction, then you can just use an embed link. That's what we're going to do. Embed link, and then it gets generated. I can also tweak the link behavior or sorry, the embed behavior. So whether or not I want to show the logo and stuff like that, I'm going to disable all of these and then I'm going to click export again. So the link updates uh, and then, yeah, I can just copy this link right here. And now I can jump inside the framer where I have this uh, simple little hero section that I want to take to the next level. Go and open the insert panel on the top left search for embed. I'm going to drag and drop this embed component here on the right side of the hero. I'm going to position it absolutely so it fills up the available space, uh, pin it uh, to all the sides. And then I just select the component and on the right panel, we just paste in the link that we copied from Hanna. And as you can see, just in a few seconds, our scene is fully embedded and it works perfectly. It's interactive. It looks nice. And yeah, it just, takes our sites to the next level. So yeah, basically that's it. Make sure to try out Hannah. Uh, you're gonna find the link in the description. You're gonna also find a bunch of cool demos on the community page of Hannah. So make sure to browse that as well. And yeah, hopefully you can use this to take your framer sites to the next level. So yeah, basically that's it for this video. I really do hope that it was helpful. If you have any questions about Hannah and Framer, how you can combine them, make sure to drop them in the comment section. I'm going to do my best to answer you guys. And yeah, also check out framer.university for more tutorials like this. And yeah, like this video, subscribe for more, and I'm going to see you in the next one.